Hello, this is Andrew with XLaser, and today we're going to take a look at getting started with the XLaser Mercury control system using Camsys MagicQ. So as you can see here, I've got MagicQ running on this PC, and you can see on the bottom left there's a camera view of what the laser is actually projecting just on the wall here in the studio. So I'm going to start a new show file here, and we'll start from scratch, and I'll show you how we got to this point. So this is a new show file now. So first thing, I'm just going to make sure that my DMX is correct, and it is. I'm using Rnet here. Uh, so I have just Ethernet running straight to the fixture via one of our Ether stops. And so first thing we're going to do, of course, is to patch the fixtures. So I'm going to go up here to choose head. I'm going to choose X laser, Mercury. And the first thing I'm going to patch is one of the master fixtures. So this is the master control block, the first six channels in the fixture, which control the overall fixture mode and zoning. So I'll click patch it. I'm going to hit one at one dash one. So I'm going to patch one master at universe one, starting at address one. Next, I'm going to patch some basic builders. So let me go up here to choose head, click X laser mercury again, basic. Now patch it. I'm going to patch four of these at one dash seven. So that's starting at universe one. DMX address seven. So these will happen directly after the master. So we'll have the master and then we'll have four builders in sequence here, as you can see here. All right, so let's start by setting up our, setting up our master here. So I'm gonna to go to layout one, click on view heads here. And actually I'm gonna rename these just so we can uh, note these are called a little bit more easily. So this is the master here. So I'll just rename that, name that master and this group I'll rename builders. These are grouped automatically. And then go in here to view head and this one, I'll rename that master. This is builder one. Builder two. Builder three. And finally builder four. All right, that's just gonna make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here. All right, so I'm gonna select the master here, go to the intensity page, and you'll see here we have an intensity and we have a, an overall master mode for the fixture. So the master mode is where you would select whether the fixture is enabled or not, and whether you're using an external input. So if you have an ILDA signal run to your laser, you would come up here to master mode, select uh, internal input. So that's what that would enable. But we're gonna use the DMX features of the laser today. So I wanna select builders enabled and I can cycle through those just by clicking right here uh, in Kansas. Now I'm gonna bring up the master intensity all the way up to full. All right, so now the master's enabled and we're ready to start, to start using the builders. So I wanna start by bringing up the intensity on builder number one. And there we go, we have a white circle. So that's the first pattern of the 400 or so gobos that we have pre-installed in the Mercury control system. Now generally the first thing you do when you start programming lasers is you're gonna to wanna to set up your zones first. And that's all done through the master interface. So I'm going to uh, go over here to group, just select my master again. I'm gonna to go to position. And you'll see here we have X scale, Y scale, and then Y offset and X offset. So these control the overall sizing of the laser. Um, but we wanna see what the overall sizing is first. So to do that, just go back to the builder, click on beam, page one, and this is right here is where we select our patterns. So for the pattern, uh, I wanna see what the overall boundary of the zone looks like. And to do that, I can go here to, uh, to Gobo page, and I'm gonna select optimize test patterns. And as long as Gobo pattern here is on zero, I get a nice big square that shows me what the boundaries of my zone are. So this is gonna work really well for doing our overall initial zoning. So back to the master here, Go to position, and now I can control the overall size, vertically and horizontally, of our overall projection zone. So now whatever I set this box to here in the master, the builders will work within that. There's no way they can go outside of these boundaries. So I can set this to whatever size I need, and then I can control the position as well. So I can move it up, move it down, whatever I need to do to make sure that I'm in a safe area for my environment. In most situations with lasers, you're going to have usually a pretty wide and flat zone. But I'm just here on the wall here, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and one thing you'll notice too, as I take this scale down, it gets smaller and then it gets wider again. It's actually inverting. So this is one way that you can invert your zone. So if you have 
a bunch of lasers in a row, you want the ones on the left to be inverted relative to the ones on the right, you can do that right here. Uh, these controls also influence the external input. So if you had an ILDA signal hooked up to your lasers, these would control the size and position of that ILDA signal as well as all the internal content generation capabilities of the laser. So this works for me here. Uh, so normally you'd want to set this up once at the top of your show, your show setup and then park or freeze this fixture so you don't have to worry about accidentally changing any of this during your programming. So I'm just going to leave this as is now. Again, I'm on the wall, so it doesn't really matter. So now we can go back to that first builder and start building some sort of cool laser effect. So I have builder one selected. I can go to beam here. And again, we have our pages of patterns here. So the way this is organized is we have a whole bunch of different pages of different kind of thematically arranged patterns. So if I go to page one here, uh, DMX value zero, and then I scroll through the gobos, you'll see that these are all circles. So we've got plain white circle, we've got colored circles, circles with dots in them, multiple circles, arc segments, all sort of kind of circular based patterns. If I go to the next page, that's all lines. So I've got small lines, big lines, colored lines, lines with dots, angled lines, again, all lines. Next page after that, all kinds of curves. So we've got swirls here, got arcs, and all kinds of different curve-based patterns. So they're all arranged sort of thematically, so that's kind of how you navigate all these 400 or so uh, different patterns. So here's all squares. That's more or less how they're all, all laid out. So I'm going to pick a... I think I'll pick a triangle here. This triangle with a dot in here, that looks kind of cool. So now we can start manipulating that. So the first thing you might notice is that we have position control, just like a moving light. I can take this and move it up, move it down. And this all works just like you'd have pan and tilt with a moving light. So that means, for instance, that you can actually program this into your, your console effects. So your effects engine in the console can see this as pan and tilt and then do pan and tilt seesaws and circles and ballyhoos and all sorts of different things that you're used to programming a moving light with. Now if I go to beam, we have a whole lot of other different ways that we can manip manipulate this image. So the first thing is just scale. Again, I can scale this down horizontally. And again, you'll see as I go smaller, it gets small and then it starts getting bigger again. And that's all, again, just inverting it. So you can flip the pattern around horizontally this way. And same thing vertically. So you'll see now it's actually easier to see that this is as it gets smaller and it gets bigger again in the opposite direction. I'll just reset those. Going on to page two, we have a prism effect. So using this, I can select a bunch of different prism arrangements. So I can take that single pattern and multiply it out into a one by two arrangement, one by three, one by four, triangles, squares, pentagons, and so on and so forth. I can then control the spread of that prism. So by using the X spread here, I can collapse that prism down on itself. And once again, if I go past the minimum point, it gets bigger again in the opposite direction. Same thing vertically as well. And then we have this inner rotation command. So what this does is this rotates incrementally each element of the prism. So you can see the first element is fixed. The second element rotates a bit, the third one a little bit more, and the fourth one even more than that. So this allows you to take a pattern and kind of make it radially symmetrical or kind of add an additional rotation to it, all sorts of things like that. So if I go to, go back to this, uh, we'll go to the Pentagon prism here. And I can take this rotation here and rotate these around until they all kind of line up into more or less a star. So now they're all radially symmetrical. So that's kind of cool. If I go back to page one now, we also have a rotation command. So this rotates the overall image just as a uh, kind of an indexed rotation. And then we also have a spin command. So this will spin forward from slow to fast and then reverse slow to fast as well. 
So this is kind of like your uh, Gobo index and spin controls. So we can leave that on kind of a slow rotation. If I go up here to page three, we have motion macros. These are a way of adding additional interest and motion and texture to your effects. So if I go up here to motion macro and select the first one, you see we get a bit of a wave happening here. I can go through, there's different kind of wave effects, denser waves, smaller waves, kind of slow and gentle waves. And you'll notice that they interact with the prism a little bit differently. So the first one here, you can see it's radially uh, symmetrical around the prism. Whereas if I go a little farther, you'll see that there are effects that are applied over top of the prism like this one here. So we also have control of the speed and the size of these macros. So there's a, a speed and size recorded into the macro, but I can override that here. So if I start increasing this to one, you'll see that the speed has slowed way down on the macro. Let me actually go back here to the rotation and turn that off. So if I take this down to zero, it slows down. I'm sorry, if I take it to zero, it's what's recorded in the macro. If I take it to one, it actually stops. The speed is zero. And then if I increase from there, you'll see it'll start to speed up. The same thing applies to the size. If I take this from zero to one, you can see that the size, it's not doing anything because the size is now zero. And I can start to increase that size and make larger and larger effects. So I'll turn those back to their defaults. And finally, of course, we have color. So colors are controlled through various color macros. So if I select color macro one, I can then use the color picker here and I have control of the overall color of the pattern. So if I leave that to a nice red, if I select other macros, you'll see we have more than one color. So now I have red, but I also have white. So that second con color is controlled by the second RGB set of channels here. So if I take that to zero, take this to zero, now we have red and blue. Um, we can control those two colors independently. If I select some different macros here, you can see that they either break up the pattern in different ways, or some of them have gradients versus hard breaks. So that's, this is more of a gradient here. It's much more gentle and gives you some pastels in there all sorts of different color macros that we can select to, to achieve different effects. Uh, some of these will also happen either before or after the prism. So sometimes they look different or, you know, depending on what your prism settings are, you might get different effects. And of course, this is all just one builder. So we have up to four builders in each fixture. So I, I can select this builder number two here, go to intensity, Turn the intensity of that up, and now I have that white circle again where we started with the first builder. I can turn the first one off as well. So now we can start building a whole other effect and either layer the two effects uh, or have two effects preset and bump between them, whatever we need to do to do the kind of layering and uh, level of complexity that we want for our show. So that's about it for the quick start of CAMSYS using the X-Laser Mercury control system. Hope you find that helpful. Take care.